Next up is Adam Argyle. And I had the, uh, I got to be honest, Adam is a fantastic MC. He really brings the energy, the punk rock attitude. I saw him at CSS Day in the Netherlands. I am a huge fan of his work with web animations, being something of a web animations hobbyist myself. Um, yeah, today he's bringing the view transitions love. And Adam, take it from here. Thank you so much, Rachel. Nice to see you too. By the way, my site uses DinoFresh and Cloudinary. I'm like, dang, I'm like a walking advertisement for these rad talks today. Uh, my site is nerdy.dev. Here, nerdy. I can blind type that. I don't even know if it's going to the right spot. Nope. Cool. Well, my talk today is on view transitions, which is an incredibly powerful and stupid API. Um, you're the smart one at the table. The API is the dumb one, but we can do really, really rad stuff with it. So if you're at home or if you just want to get all the slides and get all the links, go to seattlejsviewtransitions.netlify.app. And thank you so much for that intro. My name's Adam. I work at Google. Uh, I've been there for about six years. I work on the Chrome team on CSS, UI, and animations, also on dev tools. So making sure that we don't just give you rad features, we give you tools to debug them, and then I get to go talk about them like today. So, view transitions come in two flavors. There's same page, which is the JavaScript API that we're gonna be covering today. And then there's across pages, where you can do the same API, these same kind of cool animations as you navigate pages. So I mentioned that the same page is a JavaScript API. Oh yeah, here, look, I can point. Sweet! Um, the same page one is what you're gonna use with JavaScript, and the, the trigger here is that you tell the browser, hey, I'm about to modify the page in some way. And then you modify the page, and the browser will animate between those two states. When you're doing across pages, there's no JavaScript required because the simple act of clicking a link is a hint enough to the browser that there's a before and an after state. And it will cross fade the pages for you if you do nothing else other than just add a meta tag, you'll get this. And I just did a talk at Smashing Conf all about multi-page uh, view transitions. It's really, really fun. But today, we're at a JavaScript conference, so we better talk about JavaScript and make a cool laser light show. Um, so let's talk about JavaScript. We were mentioning earlier, so we've got same page across page. Same page is shipped in your browser right now. In your Chrome browser, unless you haven't updated it in like eight months, it's on your machine right now. And that's the JavaScript same page API. And across pages is under active development. Uh, and we'll maybe briefly talk about that for a sec. But we are focusing on same page. And so let's dig into some JavaScript. Who likes JavaScript? I also don't like semicolons. So where are you at? I'm going to laser point you. Nah, it's all good. Uh, you can use semicolons, no semicolons, no matter. You know, it'll work out. Uh, okay, so what we have here is we're gonna tell the browser we're about to modify the DOM, and it's modify the DOM in any way. So in your mind, pick your favorite DOM modification, inner HTML, text content, style, whatever you do that tweaks the page from JavaScript, we can animate it. So we say, hey browser, I'm about to do some stuff to the page. Why don't you start a view transition? It gives you back an asynchronous callback function. You do whatever you want. And when your animation is done, when your function is done, it takes a new screenshot. So notice we have an old screenshot. As soon as you call this, it goes And then after your function is done, it takes another screenshot and it will do the diff. It looks at the difference and gives you an opportunity to morph and animate between these things. So first we're gonna start out with, if all I've done is added this JavaScript, let's look at a demo. So I'm clicking and I'm, what I'm doing here in CSS is I'm just changing the alignment property. So I'm changing a property that you cannot animate. This is grid alignment, justify and align items. There's no way to go from start to end. It doesn't know what that means. It just discreetly transitions. But since I called the JavaScript function here, it says, well, I know where it was and where it is. I will just simply crossfade between these two for you. So I am kind of animating uh, alignments right now, and just very randomly, and the browser is taking that screenshot. So again, the old is where it is now. I click. It has a new location, and you see them crossfade back and forth. And so we even have a cool visual for this made by my colleague Bramus. And here you go. So if I hover on this, he's crossfading between two types of text. So he's doing like an inner text swap. And in the back here, 
we've got the page, and the page has this thing called a view transition group, which contains all of your layers. You have your two layers in here that you can see them kind of cross swapping here. There's an image pair and a transition group. The image pair handles the way that the blend modes are done together. So these things are in a shared group so that they blend just together, not with the rest of the page. It's about isolation. Uh, there's lots of research you can do about like blend modes and isolation, but that's what that one's there for. And this one does anything that has to do with scale or X and Y. And in this case, we're not doing anything with those. We're just transitioning between these two. So the browser can be very optimized and just cross-fading in animation. Plus, how sick was his animation? I just love stuff like that. Okay, cool. Um, all right, so this is also really, really important to note. You can progressively enhance it just like this. This means any, any browser, anytime you want to do it, you can just put this in front of it. Does the browser know what I mean if I say this? If it doesn't, just modify the page like regular. You get a normal instant page uh, effect that you do. But if the browser does understand it, then you put your code that does the modifying inside of this thing and you get animations. So also the crossfade by default is kind of sweet because that means without you doing anything, you're already making an accessible animation. You're even, if you do nothing else for the rest of this talk and just start using this API, your DOM modifications will crossfade and that's a better transition than whatever you're doing right now. That's probably some sort of instant transition. So it's kind of cool that that's our default, but just make sure not to break it as we move forward, but we can do better and we can build upon it. And that's where it comes into transition morphs. So with just this little line of CSS, view transition name box. So we, we ha you saw the box that was on the, on the page, right? All I've done is added this little style and that gives it a name and that tells the browser what, that there's a continual element. It's a shared element between that old picture and the new picture and it does more. It doesn't just track the whole big picture and crossfade them. It looks at the isolated individual item. If it went from here to here, it's gonna say, oh look, it obviously traveled and it will travel there. Check this out. So again, we've written one line of JavaScript and one line of CSS, and we're now animating something that was never ever animatable before. And the browser does this all for you. This API is so sick. Um, we're gonna get into some more stuff. So here, I'll just close out of that one. So that's just animating um, grid alignment. Whoop-de-doo, let's like do something cooler. Let's look at this one, which is, I call this the view transition local dev prototype which means anything I type inside of this little code block, I'm gonna tell the browser, I'm about to change some styles. And then I inject what you type in here and my function ends, the browser will animate anything I want in here, like, holy guacamole, I just animated display none. I can animate whatever I want in here because the browser has no idea what any of this stuff means. So here, six rem, nine rem, two rem, uh, let's rotate half a turn. Boink. Let's scale to two. I'm going to be here all day doing this stuff. Oh, yeah. And then I can take out both of these and watch this. <laughs> okay, anyway, that's just one. That's just, I got more demos. Let's look at some more demos. Every time I close out a demo, I'm progressing my slides. That's fun. Okay, so here's another one. Again, remember, all we've done is call the JavaScript function and written some names for these items so that they could be shared in an animation. So in this one, this is drag and drop. You know drag and drop, the API that everyone thinks sucks? It's, I don't see it's kind of bad. But here I am dragging and dropping, and all I'm doing is telling the browser, I'm about to swap some children. I swap the children, and then it goes, well, I see where the one was and the new one is, and I'll animate them. And I'm like, yeah, you will, you dumb powerful thing, um, and that's what I mean by it. it's really dumb and we're smart and we get to bring also, so here this, watch this though, so this little, it's animating as it's going, so this is an animated GIF, you can also do this with video. This old one that is going out and then a new one coming in, I can make sure that the new one has continuous animation in it. I just could sit there and play with this all day, but it's so much fun, plus let's, let's do this right. Uh, JavaScript on top, no, CSS is better than JavaScript. Anyway, I'm just gonna close the demo. So uh, we got more to check out just because this thing is that cool. Oh, we looked at that one. Let's look at this one. Ah, okay, this one I called Radiant, Radiento. This is three radio buttons. It's just a regular field set with three radios. I have display grid, making sure that whichever one is checked gets a, a two rows that it spans, and the rest of them just get distributed however grid wants to do it. I'm not controlling this, but when I, when I click one, I tell the browser, I'm gonna check a radio. And it goes, 
screenshot, and then I check the radio, and it goes, hey, the, the element moved over there. I should animate it and scale it up and cool stuff. And I'm like, yeah, you should. And then I added a little bit of a bounce to the easing, and I made this a bouncy view transition just by changing the easing. The rest of it's all still the browser doing everything. All I did was name these three things and call a function. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's like, that sounded really extreme. I need to pant really quick after that. So that's that demo. Um, I love that one, because look, we're making like a really rich selection uh, engine. So sweet. OK, one more. What's this last one? Oh, this one was made by Bramus. So again, what we, can, we can animate um, a new grid layout. So we went from one grid layout, we reassign the template columns to something else, animate it. The browser doesn't know the difference. All you do is give each of these boxes a name, and then when you change the grid layout, it goes, hey, all the boxes change sizes, so I should animate it. And you're like, yes, you should. And then you can also animate gap. Everything is pretty much on the table for you to animate off the main thread in a really fun, powerful way that the browser is ready for. So don't forget, you do want to put um, this particular line of code that gives it a view transition name, because remember, this is the one that creates some continuity between the old and the new. And the continuity is what creates the morphing. And the morphing is what might make someone vomit, like this. And you don't want people to feel like that. So all you got to do is put it inside a media query that says, hey, if they don't have a preference, if motion is OK, because they haven't clearly indicated that it makes them throw up, then go ahead and toss that in there. And so you can put all of your view transition names behind this little gated uh, media query and never make anyone throw up and give delightful animations to everyone. Because if this name isn't there, a crossfade still happens. Right? You're still giving someone a meaningful transition that's not none. Reduced motion does not mean no animation. I know that seems the easy way out, but the better way out is crossfade by default and motion uh, as an upgrade. So and here's another way to write it. I just wanted to pitch. There's a really cool spec called custom media that you can t stash your media queries inside a variable and then just use it like that. That way it takes that big word vomit out, you know, and then you get to a nice little one there. So anyway, it's just a fun little tip called custom media. We'll get it in the browser one day. It's in a lot of the preprocessors, so in case you're wondering. So we have morphed something from one place to the other just by giving it a name and just by calling a function. But there's more that we can do. There's more customization that we can do. So in this particular case, we're saying, so OK, so great. It's got to name a box. That's great. But this selector, view transition old with box, that's targeting the outgoing. Pic this is the first picture you took. Like when you call document.start view transition, it takes that first picture. That's the old one. And that's this one here old box. Then we also have new box. And look, I gave it an, I, I defined a new animation. So I'm like, hey, old one, I want you to scale down. And new one, I want you to slide up. You can customize the outgoing old and incoming new images that the browser makes. And this allows you to do more than just morphing. You can completely take control. This is animating text replace. I wrote a JavaScript loop. It's a set interval. On a set interval, it increments an index and then swaps the text. It says view transitions. And like, again, all I'm doing is calling a function, giving these things a name. This is also just one element. It's one element with one letter in it at a time. I'm not managing two nodes, making sure this one gets displayed none after its transition ends and all that stuff that we had to do before. This is literally two images that I've just defined an keyframe animation to play out as one goes out and one comes in. Exit stage, enter stage. Super cool stuff. Love that demo. Uh, and then we have more. We got more demos that we can do that just like this. Oh, so this one kind of has the same thing too. Where we got, um, well, here, let's look at some code to this one. Can you all see that code? Yeah, it actually looks pretty good, doesn't it? So here's our little hovers. Here's our prefers reduced motion. Here's our view transition stuff. OK, so look, I'm targeting old and new. And look at the name of the layer I created. Isn't that silly? Yeah, it keeps animating during morph. I'm talking about this one. That was the name I gave it, so it was like really clear what it's doing. And this says, hey, old image, I want you to not even exist. I want you gone. A new one, though, I want you also not to animate. So I want you not to do a crossfade, because the crossfade is the default, right? It's going to sort of morph and crossfade the two elements as they converge. And I'm saying, I don't want that. I want the old one to not exist, and I want the new one to be exclusively visible and not animating. And that's why when I drag this up and I let go, we don't see the old one. There isn't a transition between old and new. I've removed old and exclusively moved new in there. And so you can use this technique to not only exit stage, enter stage, but control at a micro level like what should stay and what should go. It's cool stuff. 
Yeah, I'm glad we got some code there. Let's open up this one here. Ah, uh, yeah, let me zoom in on this demo. This one's fun. So I know you've seen buttons that do stuff like that. So this is based on like a little state machine I wrote. It's another set interval and I'm changing inner HTML. So I'm animating inner HTML. So instead of having to do all of this button work inside of your JSX component that has all these ternaries and all these switches that's looking for all this state just to try to do this, all you can do is call view, start a view transition, set the inner HTML, wait for new data, set the inner HTML, wait for some other state change, set the HTML, and the browser allows you to do this uh, squishy effect. And I'll pop up in the code because what we're doing with the old and the new is I'm actually telling them to be very form fit. And that's why we're seeing some distortion. Did you see the distortion in there? You can see the letters will squish, which is normally like a bad idea. But in this case, it's so fast and it's already doing a kind of different type of morph that I don't think anyone really cares. So let's look at some of the code here. Right. Yeah, go out of here, JavaScript. We don't need you right now because all the JavaScript's doing is calling start view transition. But here's our old and our new, and we set their height and width to 100%. That means that these will form fit into the button as it's intrinsically drawn by the browser. So when the new HTML gets inserted, both the old and the new will squish to fit, but it's also going to animate those from their old and their new. And that's why we see that squishy morph because it is distorting. Look at this is normally very distorting to do to an image, and that's actually what we wanted here. We wanted the images to fit and be distorted. Super cool stuff. And that's so far, we've only gone through like half of the API. Uh, and then you can watch me build that button on YouTube. So if you're into YouTube, you can go to GUI challenges and watch me build that morphing button and I'll break it down for you in about 15 minutes on there. Okay, so further customization. What if you only want to run these animations when it's exiting or entering the stage with only child? What this lets you do is define, what if I'm alone? What if you removed my new state? So like I went from I was in this stage and now I'm no longer in the stage. There's nowhere to go, right? I'm an only child. I don't have a pair. Normally it's a pair, right? It looks at one, takes a screenshot. You got a box one, box new, box old, and it will morph between their states, crossfade their animations. And this says, but I'm, I'm an only child. There's nowhere for me to go. And so you can be like, well, hey, you should scale down. If you're, if you're not transitioning to a new location, if there's nowhere to go, scale out and disappear, fool. If you do and you're coming in for the first time and there's nowhere for where you were, but you are now being entered into the stage for the first time, you can slide in up. So again, like uh, this is the state of not having a pair, not having a match. And that only child selector on this CSS query right here allows you to tie into that stuff. And you're like, well, what can I do with that? That doesn't sound that interesting. Yeah, well, you're wrong. It's uh, super interesting. So I'm just going to show you. So hopefully you've seen the um, famous isotope JavaScript demo that someone made a long time ago. Like in 2013, DeSandro made a JavaScript library. This was his demo. It looked just like this without the springy animation. Again, that was just like a CSS easing effect. But if I use my arrow keys, all I'm doing is changing. Um, so I've got a JavaScript event listener that's watching for an event to be broadcast from this field set. When that field set changes, it looks at the value. It goes through the DOM, this whole entire grid layout, and it sets a bunch of stuff to display none. That's literally what's happening here. Display none. And grid takes care of the whole layout. But you can see how some elements, um, they go out. See how they scale out? And then when they come back in, they scale in. That's what that only child thing, right? They didn't have anywhere to go, but you can see other ones that do have a pair and they morph. They morph by just sliding over. Let's check out the sorts. The sortings are cool. So these ones won't make anything hide because it's not a filter. This is just a rearrangement. And these ones are the ones that do the filter. So this is where only child allowed me to customize how the box came in and how a box goes out. I love that demo. So here we got one more demo to peep. Yeah. Uh, this one I just recently made. So I've seen a lot of uh, sliders that do stuff like this where you change a value and it, um, uh, you know, here, there we go, where it only sort of partially updates. Like here, we'll go to six, we'll go to three. You know, ooh, 1337. 1337. Who knows what leet is? <laughs> oh, that's good. I mean, it's a lot of people know what leet is. Oh, sweet. I did not expect that. But look, I use my arrow keys. I can slide this thing here, drop it down to another number, and view transitions again. We'll look to see if there's a matching pair. Each of these got a name. This is, I think I was really clever. Like the name of this is N1 for like number one, number two, number three, number four. I also gave this one a name and I gave the comma a name. And that's why you can see the comma up here and also see the comma slide back. Watch the dollar sign slide back and forth. I'm not doing that, y'all. 
This is just a regular old layout. These, this layout is taking up space as if it wasn't being animated. And then I get to come in with the browser and just call start view transition, and it gives me this opportunity to toggle how these work. This one did get a little bit more uh, complicated because if I wanted the number to stay, I needed to remove its transition name. So like here in this case, I go to 447. All those other numbers, I, I stripped their view transition name off of them so that they didn't try to crossfade. I'm just like, hey, do nothing, browser. And in order for me to tell that view transition to do nothing, I removed its name and then it's off the charts. It doesn't know about it anymore. Um, man, super cool stuff. If we have time, there's definitely some more code to go through, but let me close this demo out. Okay, so just like a really, like a little recap. So what we've done so far, because we did a whole bunch in like a short amount of time, we morphed stuff, and who doesn't want to morph? We customized the old and the new animations, so we customized how the old image went out or the new one came in, depending if we wanted to or not. We had the option, and we customized how something entered and exited the stage if it was alone. So we have stage animations, like you're just coming in for the first time. There wasn't, it's not like I was standing over there and I'm standing over here, it's like me popping on stage. Um, and that's what we've done. So, the browser support, like I was saying earlier though, it's Chrome 111. We're at like 115 or something like that right now, 116, so that's what I mean. Um, we've got uh, really great browser support, and the progressive enhancement story was that simple, where you just check to see if the function is there and wrap your uh, modification in it. It's got really great docs. Here's where you can go for the docs. They're by Jake Archibald, they're killer. Here's where all the demos are that I just showed you today. So you can go to codepen.io collection slash gog 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 gog. Gog, 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 that's funny. And by the way, if you notice these slides, look at them morph. Does that feel familiar at all? Does it look familiar? These slides were built with view transitions. I built them though with the multi-page ones. So if I even popped in my little URL bar, you would see the URL change and all the animations are powered by keyframes provided by open props. You can do it too. I open sourced this Astro kit for how I built these slides in something called Morphle. Go fork Morphle, make slides, they'll morph for you, just like you're seeing right here. You don't even have to name anything. I already named them. You just clone it and go. It's awesome. And so you have everything you need. I hope you think view transitions are sweet, because they are. But watch this really quick. Here you go, I'm just going through my, these are full page navigations. Full page navigations. The API is just so rad anyway. So here, let me find the thank you slide. Where is it? There. 